Are your important emails being ignored, leaving you feeling invisible and frustrated and basically penniless? What if I told you that there's a secret weapon to turn that silence into a conversation that converts? Today, I'll reveal the ultimate guide to crafting a powerful follow-up email sequence that will open doors, get responses, and supercharge your email game. Stay tuned because you won't want to miss these game-changing strategies. But before we start, hey, it's Alex, helping you with all your B2B business needs. And on this channel, we talk about cold email, B2B to be lead gen, SaaS, and agency growth. So if you're interested in stuff like that, subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. Number one is understanding the importance of follow-up emails. Before we dive into the actual process of writing a follow-up email sequence, let's talk about why it's so important. Have you ever wondered why people don't respond to your emails? It's not always because they're not interested. Sometimes they're just busy, forgetful, or your email gets buried in their inbox. That's where follow-up emails come in. By sending a well-timed and crafted follow-up email, you can increase your chances of getting a response and achieving your goal. I know for me, follow-ups are extremely important. We've had deals where we followed up every single month and nothing's happened. I remember this specific deal with a Fortune 500 company that we were running at the last agency I worked at. And every month I would email the director of marketing over there. I would send some ideas for them. I would send some new concepts for them. One time I even designed a full game that they could offer and I sent it their way. And eventually what happened? They got back and we closed a project worth over $70,000. Follow-ups work insanely well. And if you're not following up with people, you are leaving money on the table. Now that we know why follow-up emails are crucial, let's break down the anatomy of a successful follow-up email. There are five main components. The subject line, which gets people to open, personalization, which shows them that you're writing an email just to them, a case study, which shows that you're capable, the offer, which tells them what you're selling, and the call to action, which shows them what the next step is going to be. That's the anatomy. And in fact, we can show you examples of follow-ups right now. We'll just throw a couple on the screen and you can just copy paste these and start using them in your follow-up sequences. Number three is creating a follow-up email sequence. You've seen some of our examples. You know the components of a great follow-up email, but how many follow-ups should you send and when? Well, let's explore what is the ideal number of follow-up emails. There's no one size fits all answer to the ideal number. It could depend on your specific situation and your goals. But let's say your goal is to make sales and your specific industry is B2B like we sell to. Well, if you're trying to make sales and you're in B2B, you just got to follow up until they buy or die. You know, like the Wolf of Wall Street would say, if they're even a little bit interested in your product, you need to continue to follow up until they respond positively to you or they tell you that they're not interested. The general rule of thumb is to send between three to five follow-up emails in your cold email campaign. If they haven't responded positively by then, then you can stop. But if they did respond positively, you keep going. In that cold email campaign, you're going to balance being persistent and not overwhelming the recipient. Persistent means following up regularly. Overwhelming means following up too often. Here are the time intervals between follow-ups. Timing is crucial when it comes to follow-up emails. I usually send the first follow-up two to three days after the initial email, and it looks like this. Hey, I'm sure you're busy and just wanted to make sure this didn't get buried. This is sent as a response to the previous email, and so all the context they need is already there in their email inbox. Then 10 to 14 days after that first email, I'll send the second follow-up. This is normally a big news email. Share a win or a case study. For example, Alex, I just signed another web development client and we're getting close to being booked solid and I'd love to do the same for you. What time works for you for a quick call? Happy to send over a few times as well. Thanks, Alex. Then the third follow-up comes three to four weeks later and it is the breakup email. This is the email that is the last chance at working with you. And it goes like this. Hey, Alex, at this point, I'd assume getting more clients for your SaaS business isn't a priority this year. Please let me know if that changes. Would love to work together. Thanks, Alex. Now they're gonna get that email and they're either going to respond to that or they'll let you slip away and you can add them back into the email list in about three to six months and just target them again. When you are selling in general, but in follow-ups as well, you wanna use language that's widely used in your niche. So for instance, if you're talking to doctors, you wouldn't say, hey, let me get you more clients. 
you would say, hey, let me get you more patience. Another note here is the busier the person is, the longer you should wait between follow-ups. If you're emailing Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, in order to get on his calendar, then don't follow up every single day. Time moves differently for these people. So it might be enough to email them once every six months with a follow-up. That way you don't mess up any progress. So for very busy people, more follow-ups isn't better. And in fact, it hurts your chances of getting on the calendar. Now let's talk about some tips for increasing response rates, starting with the most important tip of all. Optimize your emails for mobile devices. Remember that people view your email on all sorts of devices. I know this sounds stupid, but like when you check in emails, bro, I'm checking emails on my phone. I'm not really checking emails on my laptop. I might be, but most of the time it's on the phone. So if your email requires somebody to scroll up and down, you know, left and right to see what's going on in this email, you're not gonna get a response. That's why we follow the three C's, compliment, case study, call to action, nice five sentence compressed email like we talk about in our best-selling book, Cold Email Manifesto. That way it's readable on the phone, it's readable on the desktop, and you'll actually get responses. Is that the most important tip of all? I don't know, I was just trying to use clickbait for you. Next up is keep track of your results and adapt your strategy. If your open rate's low, you're gonna improve your open rate. If your reply rate's low, you are gonna improve the body of your email. Maybe the compliment's wrong. Maybe the targeting's wrong. Who knows? Maybe you have to hire a coach and fix it. You can click down in the description below. I'll help you personally with your cold email campaigns. Now let's talk about some common mistakes to avoid. First common mistake is sounding too pushy or aggressive. Now you're a salesperson. You know that your thing is valuable and you might just want to push it through. So don't get frustrated. Answer the client's questions as they come up and don't be too aggressive or too pushy or it might fall through. Just do what needs to be done here. Another big mistake people make is not following up at all. Like we said, if you're not following up, you're not gonna get the deal. Another huge mistake is sending too many follow-ups in a short period of time, sending daily or even weekly follow-ups. And then another big one is failing to provide additional value in each follow-up. You can do that quick bump once, but after that, you really need to start sharing some ideas or sharing some hype, pushing the deal forward in that way, otherwise, they're not going to open your emails. You're gonna get manually marked to spam and you'll start losing domains or having to use Omniwarm to save the domains. So make sure you incorporate all that stuff. Congratulations, now you know how to write a follow-up email sequence that gets results. Remember, persistence is key when it comes to email communication. By following up effectively, you'll not only increase your chances of getting a response, but also demonstrate your professionalism and commitment to your goals. If you have any questions or thoughts, please leave them in the comments below. If you wanna get the full follow-up sequence that you can use so that you'll never be ghosted again, check out the description below. We have the entire follow-up sequence for you. You can get it for free.